Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Safir TV. The topic is Hajj, which inshallah we will all get to undertake uh, at least once in our lifetime, inshallah. It will be indeed a journey of a lifetime. Could I at this point ask for all the parents to especially listen to what we have to say because it concerns their children, their children and Hajj. My name is Ali Hassan and with me, of course, is our Hajj expert, Sheikh Ayub. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Very good. I have an interesting topic for you. It, just like how I mentioned to the brothers and sisters that are watching, children and Hajj. I'm a little bit confused with this. I hope you can alleviate any of my confusion and concerns. Um, because previously we discussed puberty was a criteria, a condition for one to perform Hajj. This particular episode is about children. So I take it, I'm, I'm, I understand that it's those children before they reach the age of puberty. And you use the technical term in Arabic, balugh. Mm, balugh. Balugh, if I'm not mistaken, that's yeah. correct. Sir, you're going to have to explain this to me, if you don't mind. No um, what does that mean exactly? Are you saying now, or are we saying now, that children who have not reached the age of puberty, they can go to Hajj? Now, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Indeed, children are allowed to go for Hajj, and uh, there are few things we need to look at. If you look at some family members when they go wherever they want to go, they go together. Sure. So Islam is not here to say, "Oh, only you, because you are the father, you are able." to go for Hajj, you can go and leave your family back. Makes complete sense. Yeah, you decide to go with your family, you have the ability, go. But as you, you have mentioned clearly, children who are under the age of bulugh, age of maturity, age of puberty, sure. it's not wajib upon them, it's not compulsory for them to go for Hajj. But if they want, the parents want to take them, it's fine. They can take them and go perform Hajj, no problem at all. Sure. Maybe there is a benefit for some children who go there, when they come back, that picture, look at Al Kaaba, look at Maqam Ibrahim, look at Hijr Ismail, then you have Safa and Marwa, you have a congregation of people who all go for one business and that is Hajj. Mm. By the way, we do not have in this world any bigger or biggest congregation in the world like Hajj. You may have other people who may gather together here in their families and so on and so forth, but with meaningful journey to go for the sake of the Almighty, it is only Islam we have this pilgrimage, which we call it Hajj, sure. which is a, the biggest congregation. So yes, adults, children can go together, no problem at all, and it's good for children sometimes to go there. Um, I understand that. But being a father myself, um, and my children are quite young, I actually have concerns. I don't think I can take them or I should take them because surely a place um, or the whole rituals of Hajj and everything, the Tawaf and all these people, uh, I'd be concerned for my children to be, I mean, I'd have to keep an eye on them. Would I be even able to perform Hajj properly? Mm, mm. So um, I know you said yes to that already, but I don't know, I have a bit of feedback or just concerns. How would you alleviate my concerns? Yeah, it's good to think on any, any uh, responsible father or mother, they have to, to think for their children. You are right, so when we talk about the congregation is so big and sometimes really, when you go there with the children, you need to think twice. Are you able to perform your Hajj? and then take care of your children, because you have to be in certain places at certain times. Yes. It's not like, let them go today, I'll go tomorrow. When the Hajj starts, you will all have to go together. It's time critical. Indeed. Yeah. So here you need to think, is it really something I want to do, take my children? We, we can talk, on, we cannot talk on behalf of people. It's their decision. When we talk about law, mm. Islamic laws allow them to go. No problem at all, they can take their children. However, you as a father, you are the guardian of your children. Sure. So you need to be pretty sure 
of what you are doing that I'm taking my children and I will have to perform my Hajj and they will have to perform their Hajj too. So now the age criteria here comes into the discussion. Sure. How old are your children? Yes, we are talking about the under Bulu age. How will I be able to perform Hajj with them? So that gets uh, uh, into another discussion. Um, just before we began, there was uh, certain words that were mentioned. I'm trying to recall them, but it was to do with children that are able to distinguish between right and wrong, or they're able to. They're, let's say they're a bit. Um, their mind frame or their thought process is a bit more enhanced than others at that age. Mm. They're all children like that. Sure. You know, there's prodigies as well. Um, would, would, is there a special term for these types of Indeed. children? When we talk about uh, not only Masail of Hajj issues which are connected with pilgrimage, in Islam, children are divided into two. When we talk about the under Bulugh age. Okay, so under Bulugh. And yep. there's still two categories. So two categories. Um, okay. One in Arabic, they are known as children who are mumayyas. Mumayyas. And those who are ghair mumayyas. They are non mumayyas. Sure. So mumayyas children are the children who are able to, for example, they can look at uh, someone. Mm -hmm. They can say, for example, well, he's not wearing the clothing or we can see something wrong here. They can point at things. They they know what is happening around okay. wherever they are. So their observational skills, they're quite sharp in that regard. Indeed. And they can decipher between what they see is perhaps deemed correct or not. Is yes. That, okay. Yeah. Okay. But those who are non mumayas well, they are babies, you can say. They don't know what is happening around them. So they they cannot even sometimes distinguish between someone who is wearing and the, the other one who is not wearing. Okay. These two categories, you need to remember when you take them for Hajj, you will be responsible as a guardian to make sure those who are non mumayas they cannot distinguish things in front of them properly. You have to do everything for Hajj on their behalf. Right. So you, you mean, it, what it means here, you have to make sure they are doing things for themselves but you become responsible of making sure every act of Hajj is done properly. By them. By them. So you have to make their ihram, for example, properly. Right. You have to make sure when they start tawaf, yeah, they do it properly. But you have to say the words you have sometimes to say on their behalf. Uh, and, and, and it requires a lot of uh, efforts for you to do that. So what is the responsibility of the guardian when he has a child that is, help me with that word mumayas again, mumayas. or non mumayas So what is the response? Really quickly, sorry. Because yeah, I was, so when I was, we talk I... about mumayas the one who can distinguish things, you can guide them and tell them. So for example, now make sure your intention, remind them, mm -hmm. you do your intention. Now you're going to start the tawaf. You know how to do tawaf. You have prepared their ground. So they can do without you using a lot of effort to make sure that they do it properly because they are, uh, they can distinguish things. But those ones who cannot, you have to make sure that everything is done sure. properly and not only they do, but you have to make sure they perform things properly. Thank you very much. I understand that better now. Now here's another question for you. These children that have now performed the Hajj, Will their Hajj actually be deemed as completed in full, valid, and will they actually get the sawab for it? Mm. MashaAllah. First of all, when you see them after they have completed the uh, actions of Hajj and the acts of worship of Hajj, you admire them because they are young and under Bulugh. So MashaAllah, they need to be congratulated. When we come to the law now, was their Hajj valid or not? Yes. When we talk about validity, we talk about something which has been acceptable or accepted as per the conditions, if the conditions were fulfilled. So if they did perform the Hajj according to any Hajj, any person who goes for Hajj, they did everything right. Their guardians, they took care of them. That Hajj will be accepted. Okay. Allah will reward them Inshallah. immensely.
because they did when they were ch children. Wow. Now we come to the now, will that obligation of Hajj be removed from them? Right. So the answer is no. The obligation of Hajj will not be removed from them. So what does it mean? When they grow bigger, mm -hmm. they need to go and perform Hajj on themselves. Okay. Why? Because remember, we spoke about the conditions of Hajj. You need to be Baalikh. Yes. You need to be matured. So if they, were, they did not reach the age of pu puberty, the Hajj will be accepted. But the obligation has not been removed from them. So the box hasn't been ticked? No. For, for example, an adult, what we deem to be as an adult who is fully capable of going and meets all the conditions. Indeed. So they will have to redo it. Let me add one thing more. Please. And this is so the parents should be aware of that. Okay. They shouldn't come and uh, once uh, the children have grown bigger and they want to go for Hajj, the father shouldn't say that, no, 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 you perform Hajj when you are young, so you don't need to go again. I took you when you are a young, when you are a child. Oh. No. They have to go back again and perform another hajj. So the parents should not uh, take um, Islam into their own sort of myths and change it. They need to get official, proper, valid information Indeed. and then give that to children. Of course, that's always going to be the case. Okay, so here's a scenario. Let's say um, a parent like myself, I deem it uh, inappropriate uh, for me to take, take my children with me for various reasons. One, I may not be able to concentrate because obviously I'm going to enhance my spirituality or I'm actually, I actually have a bit of fear, a bit of worry about the safety of my children. Um, so I would, let's say, get a child minder for a couple of weeks. Um, is that some sort of a condition? Let me rephrase that. What if my children are not going to be happy? I know they're going to miss us. Me and the wife are both going in this. I forgot to mention the wife as well. Mm. That's a good up to week, two week process, maybe even more there, you know, um, is that, is that justified? Uh, I will probably feel a bit guilty. I will miss them severely. Both of us will. Is that perhaps some sort of a criteria or condition that has not been met? Therefore, I should not be going to Hajj. No, not at all. Uh, once Hajj becomes wajib upon you, you have to go for Hajj. Any other preparation, do it before you go for Hajj. Okay, so if my daughter looks at me with her puppy dog eyes and says, Dad, don't go, don't leave me, I, I still have to go. Yeah, you have to find good words to talk to this uh, uh, sweet uh, young person in order for you to explain to them that you are doing this not only for your sake, but for their sake as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, there was one particular issue I wanted to mention yes. here, and that is girls. When we talk about the age of puberty, okay, uh, boys and girls, as we mentioned in a previous program, there is no a certain age. So we mentioned a few signs. Sure. Girls, however, they become balir when they reach the age, age nine, according to the Islamic calendar, not age nine according to the Gregorian calendar. So once they reach age nine, they are taken as matured girls. Okay. So they, when, when they go for Hajj, and they perform their Hajj, they are taken as matured. Even though in our eyes, in the eyes of many communities, they're still children, right. girls. Right. For boys, no, we said it depends when they see certain signs. As we mentioned, for example, uh, the issue of uh, uh, seeing pubic hair, or for example, when they see wet dreams and other uh, signs which are there. Okay. So this is very important to mention it when, we, when we talk about children and Hajj. Well, thank you for mentioning that. And we have run out of time, unfortunately. But of course, we will make more time for the other topics that we need to discuss. Sure. My dear brothers and sisters and, and fellow parents, um, I just want to say for myself that whenever I take my children anywhere, really, whether that's to the park or a, a theme park or any destination or family's house even, they always come back and they remember. If they remember everything, they remember something. And we talk about it from weeks and days on end. Imagine if you were to take them to this place. They, I think they would have such a strong implant or a print of that in their mind. They would absorb things that you'd be shocked to see. And they'll be talking about it from years to come. Again, that's my humble opinion. And so there. with that said, 
I thank you for watching and I ask you to tune in to our next episodes. The next one will be on mini Hajj, which means Umrah. Umrah at Tamatta. Thank you once again. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.